So, uh, okay. So uh, we're starting now with uh, well, the, t the title you can read and I can't. XCP, OpenStack, Debian, and the Cloud. Yep. Uh, this will be the river ride, uh, Thomas Goran. Goran. And uh, please. Hola. Thanks for attending my, my talk. I hope you will be able to cope with my uh, silly French accent. <laughs> so what, what am I going to talk uh, today? Uh, so it's mainly on the topic of what's new in Wizzy. I want to let you know about um, my past work during this year to package cloud computing stacks in Debian. Uh, so I let you know what, what we have done together, so together with Citrix and with other people working on OpenStack. Briefly, I'm 36 years old. I'm the CEO of GPL Host, which is a company doing server hosting. Uh, we have an internal software to do hosting. I'm French. I live in Shanghai. Um, I normally don't do uh, self-promotion here, but since I'm not in the permanent sponsor list, I wanted to highlight that GPL Host is hosting uh, seven relays for the video of DebConf. Uh, it's like all of them, but uh, Sydney and, and Malaysia. So, I hear many times that cloud computing is a buzzword, that we shouldn't even talk about it because like, it's just marketing and it's boring. And in fact, it's not. That's one of the things you have to really put in your mind is that it's not just marketing. There's really software behind that and not just a few. Like there's many solutions available and all of them are quite large and represent lo lots of code. Um, there's many types of cloud computing. There's uh, infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, and uh, software as a service. Here in this talk, I'm going to talk only about infrastructure as a service, meaning providing virtual machines to uh, the final users. This means for having a cloud computing service, it needs to have all these four points. So it has to be on-demand, it has to be self-served, scalable, and measurable. I mean, like, the hosting serv service provider must know how much you've used. And together, this is awesome. <laughs> Thanks to Dave, who, who gave me that. So um, why is it important to have cloud computing service software in Debian? So we've, been, uh, we've seen a trend, like everybody's moving to um, cloud computing as a service for software. Like, People are moving to Google Doc, to uh, WordPress. Uh, they use their mail on, on big platforms. And in Debian, we've made a statement. Um, Zach um, made an announcement together with Citrix and the OpenStack community that Debian cares a lot that we have a cloud computing software available in Debian because we think it's a safeguard for our freedom. We want to be able to use infrastructure as a service directly in Debian. So, when we use cloud computing services, we need a hypervisor. A hypervisor is the thing that runs your virtual machine. It's a bit like a PC emulator. So like, you have like the illusion that you have a full computer when in fact you only have uh, a virtualized server, okay. So cloud computing s uh, stacks do not implement hypervisor. They all use hypervisors, so they are, they are customers of it. Uh, there's a lot of hypervisors currently available in Debian, so ZenKVM, VirtualBox, uh, QMU, VMware, and you can access 
these three through packages in Debian. So Amazon EC2, there's uh, UK tools that you can use to access EC2. But uh, of course you cannot install EC2 on your own hardware. Uh, briefly, there's also containers with LXC that is available in, in Debian. Uh, it's, it's great to have LXC because uh, now it's, it's in mainline kernel, so we have very good hope that we'll be able to provide cloud computing on top of LXC. So to do cloud computing, as I said, we need a hypervisor. So I took these slides from uh, Jeremy at Citrix. So I I'll show them first a bit fast. So you see there's many types of, of uh, uh, hypervisors and different models. Basically, with ESXi, you have a machine here that is kind of op opaque. So like you don't have access to it. You just have a black box. So as a system administrator, I don't really like this model because if there's any problem there, I won't even know. With KVM, you start real machines as processes of the host operating system. And then it's different because you have the hypervisor running here, and the DOM0 is at the same level as the DOM use. Like the DOM0 provides the management, and it's considered by the hypervisor just as a virtual machine with more privileges. So on the paper, it's better, but KVM is easier to manage in, inside the kernel because virtual machines are just a process. And on the container side, we used to have OpenVZ uh, and vServer available in Squeeze, and that is gone away. The reason is that nobody stood up to say, I'm going to maintain that. So currently, we have only LXC, and we can use it in the cloud computing environment uh, using OpenStack, which is, I believe, the only stack that can man manage LXC. So a brief history of Zen. That as well, I took it from slides from Citrix. So basically, we had the Zen project started there. Around here, we had the first usable uh, Zen hypervisor. So like with, with version 2, it started to be really good. Then Amazon started to uh, use it and provide uh, cloud computing service, then Rackspace. Then Citrix started to work on XCP, which uh, was, um, OK. So then after there was Zen server that was sold for about 500 bucks a year. That was a cloud computing stack. And I'd say that around 2010 or 2011, we started to see open source stacks for cloud computing. So basically, for us lovers of free, free software, Nothing between before 2010 available, and now it starts to be available widely. So in Citrix, they first started to sell Zen Server as uh, a proprietary software. Then they wanted to open source it, so they took this ISO image, which is CentOS based, and provided it as a CentOS appliance of, as free software. Uh, but still not packaged. It means that you take the ISO image, you install it on your server, and that's about it. There's no standalone, there was no standalone RPM packages that you could use. You had the source and you could do it yourself, but that's not the way it was released and shipped. And since about a year, uh, we have uh, Citrix that worked on a packaged solution for XCP. That was called Project Kronos. And um, so all of these three implements Zen API, which is a RESTful API that you can use to uh, create, uh, manage, and start, stop virtual machines. So uh, that's what I've been working on with uh, the guys from Citrix, was packaging that and Making, making it available in Debian. 
So this, this started about a year ago, so there was discussions in the OpenStack uh, mailing list saying that, okay, we have OpenStack, this is a Ubuntu project, so Debian-based, and we have XCP, which is uh, a CentOS appliance. So it didn't really make sense for administrators to have both CentOS and uh, Ubuntu or Debian uh, together on the same cloud environment. As well, it made sense on the maintaining side because like, if you have packages, it, it might be easier to maintain the, uh, the software. So um, Mike and John started that project like, uh, last, in April 11. And we've been working on that until December what, when it was first uploaded in, in Debian. So Mike and John has been extremely helpful, and not only that, they've been also very friendly. So I'm happy to announce that we have that for Wizzy, and it's basically you do apt-get install XCP XAPI, and you have a server which is ready to use with XCP. Still some uh, RC bugs. Uh, no, there's no RC bugs anymore. There's like two normal bugs. And we'd be happy to have more testing and, and more reports, and of course, more fixes. So contributions are, of course, of course welcome. So a few differences we have between the CentOS CD and the packages in Debian. Sorry. So um, because it's a CentOS appliance, they have to maintain all the packages themselves. So the hypervisor version that you have in current XCP is a bit lagging behind. Uh, the DOM0 that we have in, in XCP, in Debian or Ubuntu, is what is available as, as the operating system. Uh, so only 32 bits for the Zen appliance. Um, the, it's very fortunate that both uh, Ubuntu the last Ubuntu LTS and Debian uses the same kernel version. Okay, next slide. So what is the difference between using just Zen and XCP? The main difference is that instead of having one hardware that you maintain with XM or XL on the command line, is that you have XE and it manages a pool of servers, many hardware. So you have a master node that you control with the command line or with the REST API. So the REST API, the XE tool, uh, the, sorry, the XE tool on the command line is just a client for the REST API that you could use by yourself using JSON and things like that. So you have a pool of hardware, not only for compute, but as well for storage. So every machine that runs uh, Zen API can be used for storage as well. So there's multiple storage type. So X is like X3 or a storage type. You can as well use directly LVM, giving partitions to your virtual machines or iSCSI, NFS, Samba, whatever. So, and there's, yeah, there's um, Samba stuff to store your ISO images and provide them to your clients when they want to install um, virtual machines. There's a very cool feature that Citrix is currently working on, which is storage motion, meaning that currently you can move one machine from one server, from one physical server to another, it's called live migration. But the storage will stay on the hardware where your current virtual machine is running. With storage motion, as its name, uh, as you might have guessed by this name, means that you can um, move the physical, the virtual machine's compute workload but as well the storage. So it, it will move live when the virtual machine is running. I really hope that we'll have that for Wizzy plus one. So a bit of demonstration here. So how does it work in, in real life? So that's a script that I'm going to 
explained in details. So what you have in blue, there, 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 okay, is things that you can replace um, uh, in, in this typical script. Uh, the red things are the exe commands. So basically, every commands sends, uh, that you send will return you a uh, UID. So that's If I can find my mouse, yeah, it's there. So what's cool, oh, I'm in Chinese. <laughs> so what's cool is that you have a uh, bash autocomplete. So you can see all the comments for XE. Quite a lot, right? For more than 400. So you can do XE VM list. And currently, you see that there is only my um, DOM0 machine. And here, you, you have uh, the same script as I showed on, on the slides. So find a template, create the machine, add it to visual network interface, set few parameters, and then finally start. So the start is commented. So if I do XE VM list, so you see there's no machines, and I do new VM, and very quickly, XE VM list. Very quickly, you see that there is a new machine called Managua 2012 that I can start if I want, XE VM, so ST tab, and you see it completes. VM equal, and then there I can either give uh, the UUID that you see here, or the name. So I'm going to give the name, that's cooler. Managua 2012. So starting is as fast as you do with normal Zen. No, that's. Managua 2012. And there you go, and you see a nice netboot. Yoo-hoo! So I won't go, of course, in the process of setting it up. That would be boring. Just do a next EVM list to show you that it's running. If I want, I can shut it down. A few, few, few comments so that you, can, you have VLAN, create, so everything's there. So that's it about the very quick overview. There's as well uh, Zen, Open Zen Manager. So if you have used the um, tool delivered by VMware, so that's comparable. So that here you have a list of the templates. Uh, maybe I, I should show that because that's, that's nice. So when you create the machine, that's what you do, okay? So you have all the list of templates. So if I add a D, then it will show only the Debian ones. Okay. So now go back to my slides. So here you will see all the templates, the same way you would see on the command line. So basically, this is just like XE, so that's a client for the REST API, but in a graphical way. Um, so when you use um, so XCP, you have one of the possibilities to use normal Zen bridging, or you have the possibility to use Open vSwitch. So I won't talk in details about Open vSwitch because I believe Guido is going to talk about it in he, the, the presentation just after mine. But basically, uh, what does Open vSwitch is that if you have many servers and many switches and a complicated ne network, what it's going to do is that aggregate all these and make it controllable from one unique central point. So it's going to maintain VLANs across your networks. 
um, your switch has to support labeling, and then it will create VLANs. The goal is that one customer has like uh, many virtual machines. You want these virtual machines to be connected to each other, but you don't want your customer to see the traffic of other virtual machines. Uh, as well, what it does is uh, monitoring with the VFlow protocol so that you will know how much bandwidth uh, virtual machines are using. You can do QoS and things like that. Uh, so, XCP is nice. It's very easy to use on the shell. You can create and, and stop virtual machines, but it's not EC2 compatible. And there's many services that it provides that are lacking for putting that in production and provide it to your customers. So, one way to use XCP is to use it together with OpenStack. So, um, XCP will do the compute load, mainly. So OpenStack will bring you the EC2 API and the S3 API, do storage for you. So you will have your uh, images that will be stored using Glens over Swift if you use that setup. There's many ways to set up OpenStack. I will, I will come to that later. Uh, you might have heard that about the first, like, Citrix is focusing on CloudStack. That was an announcement that I think now Citrix is uh, regretting. Uh, in fact, they are still working on OpenStack and providing support for OpenStack. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, Zen is a very cool, cool hypervisor, um, and that's the only way you have to use, to, the only way you can use Zen is through Zen API, if you use OpenStack, and not through libvirt. The libvirt uh, thing, compatibility for Zen in OpenStack is not tested. So don't even try, because you'll be the first person to do it. Uh, the, the setup is a little bit more complex than using just KVM, meaning that uh, the, net, the networking part is really complicated. You have to, to set up three networks, three VLANs, one for management, one for private, one for internal connections between your VMs. So now, now I'll talk a bit more about OpenStack itself. Uh, so there's many, many components in OpenStack. Just Nova creates about 10 binary packages, and Nova is only one of the projects of OpenStack. Uh, so OpenStack uses a uh, database, whichever the, uh, you want, because it uses SQL Alchemy. So you can use SQLite, MySQL, or Postgres. It doesn't really matter. And the RabbitMQ server. So uh, RabbitMQ server is, a man is a, uh, uh, something to communicate between the components. So it's, it's a messaging queue. Meaning that you have, may, uh, on one side, you have many components that might send some messages, and they want it maybe broadcast to many other components. So that's what it does. Uh, then you have the core project of OpenStack, so Nova Volume, uh, Nova Glance, and Nova Swift, together providing storage. Um, and then the compute part is made uh, out of Nova, and as I just said, XCP, if you want to use Zen. Uh, so in Nova, you, in the, your compute nodes, you will need Nova Network, Nova Scheduler, and maybe Quantum for uh, managing your network. That slide is a kind of a joke to tell you, oh, look, that's easy. There's only a few components. And of course, I have to explain a bit how it works. So this is the RabbitMQ messaging thing. So all of the components of OpenStack can send messages to the queue. And then after the queue, dispatches the mes messages to all the components. Um, so basically, you have no Nova API that will listen to a, a RESTful uh, request from the outside, or through Nova Dashboard. So Dashboard is the Horizon project. 
And that's a web GUI. So you connect to it, create machines through a web interface. Um, I like to highlight that if you use cloud computing, it's a bit silly to use a web GUI. Cloud is uh, all about automation and scaling and script, scripting. So it's not the way to con as a customer to use the cloud. But it's still nice to have a web interface and see an overview of what's going on. So the customers talk to uh, Nova API, and then Nova API sends to the queue to compute to create start and stop virtual machines. Uh, Nova Network is the thing that will route all the traffic of your virtual machines. So um, your VMs will run in this, like many hardware, and then absolutely all of their network will go through Nova Network. So there's two ways to set it up. First, one way is that you have one Nova Network, and then all the VMs are routed through that. Or another way is to set up Nova Network in each compute node that you have. So doing that is uh, like you have more things to maintain, but the nice point is that you have more redundancy. Like if one Nova Network com uh, uh, server dies, then you still have networks for the others. Um, so Nova Volume is uh, a kind of, uh, it uses LVM, so that's the elastic block storage of, of, of Nova, meaning that you create a partition and then just say, assign that to uh, this virtual machine. Uh, the Nova scheduler, you won't have to deal with it too much. It just decides where virtual machines are going to, to be started. Yeah, and here, when you want to create new virtual machines, you have a Glance. So Glance just stores your uh, virtual machines images, like AMI if you, if you use the um, AWS. So here it will store your, your images, and then you have multiple backends. Um, you can use uh, Swift. So Swift is the uh, equivalent of S3. So Swift is not um, file system storage, it's objects. So you can have literally billions of, of objects stored there, an image, uh, a picture, a video. It's not to, meant to be fast, but it's meant to store a lot of objects, and it's highly redundant. Typically, you will uh, have at least three Swift machines, uh, that have at least three copies, and then after you can add more and more hardware. And it does the copy using rsync in repetitive uh, uh, cron jobs. So once you have all the complicated setup you have here, then you can plug uh, XCP on it if you like to use Zen. So what happens is that you have one OpenStack controller system, and then it connects to, uh, let's say, one uh, XCP server, and that one can have multiple um, uh, XCP servers to get connected to each other. So one master, many slaves. And if you have multiple availability zones, then you can have these three. So that's one cool feature about OpenStack as well, is that you can have Availability zones, so like let's say multiple ones in your data centers or across uh, the world if you have uh, multiple data centers. Um, so I like uh, OpenStack is maintained by many these four guys, including myself. Um, NXCP is main, maintained by, by Citrix guys with, with me together. So currently the, the packaging is quite complicated. Uh, it's not easy to set up. It's not something you say, okay, I just set up a seed and then five minutes, five minutes later it's done. So we, we tried to have um, Google Summer of Code students to do what we called a, an OpenStack packaging use case. So what we were hoping through that was that we'd had 
uh, meta packages so that you could say, okay, here's a compute node, I just do apt get install, OpenStack compute node, and then magically it would, it would come up. So that hasn't been done, and we would be very happy if we could provide that to Debian and reduce the size of the how-tos. Uh, so our final goal will be to have no documentation because it would be so easy to set up, and I think we are far away from that. Uh, we, we've added already a few uh, DebConf uh, configuration screens, and we hope to add some more later. So we targeted, um, in OpenStack, it's uh, maintained through the same release cycles as you find in Ubuntu, so that it, every six months there's a new release. So we had Boston, Diablo, Cactus, uh, no, Boston, Cactus, Diablo, and SX. Currently, we are at SX that has been released through, uh, together with Ubuntu uh, 12.04. And we are quite happy of this release cycle because it means that the guys working on OpenStack will maintain that for five years, and that's what we are going to maintain in Wizzy. So for us, it's really fortunate. Um, like the, the, the two previous versions of OpenStack, like Cactus and Diablo, were usable, but not as much as SX, which we are very happy because it's more stable. It has all the features we, one we need. So we're, we're quite in a comfortable situation here. But there's a lot of work that is going on. OpenStack is a very uh, young project. It's only two years old, okay? So uh, there's always more and more things to be added. Um, there's, in Debian, since Lenny, there's Ganetti, which was the first, open, uh, the first cloud stack that was available in Debian. But there's more to be packaged. Um, personally, I'd be very happy if we had Open Nebula or CloudStack or Eucalyptus pack totally packaged in Debian. Currently, we have Ganetti, since Lenny, and then we have XCP, OpenStack, and that's it. Nothing more available. So, um, especially Eucalyptus, it would be interesting because, okay, that, that is already available in, in Ubuntu. They've been using it for years already. The very good point of that is that it's uh, fully compatible with EC2. Um, OpenStack team decided that Yes, they will try to be EC2 compatible, but that's not one of their main goal. What they would like to do is more uh, having uh, a nice API, and if they have to diverge a bit from EC2, then be it, doesn't matter. Because OpenStack is aiming more at um, being the standard of cloud computing by itself. So, all of these are very interesting, and we would love to see them in Debian. Uh, so if you would like to contribute, uh, you're, of course, welcome. And these are the references you should take list of. Um, so once again, I'd like to thank uh, John and Mike from Citrix for being great upstreams. Um, so. On the OpenStack packaging, there's been uh, Loic and Julien from Innovance, which is a French company. Uh, Innovance has spent like a lot of money uh, by hiring Julien for like many months, doing full-time work on OpenStack packaging. It's really, really a lot of packaging. It's complicated, so we really needed them to work to do that for the community. Uh, so, a big, big up to them. Uh, recently, George, uh, he will recognize himself, did a lot of uh, bug submission on, on the Debian BTS. This was very helpful, so thanks to him as well. And uh, we, are now, we have now have 10 minutes, so I'm happy to have uh, questions and answers. Please go ahead. Uh, where's the, the microphone? Yeah, over there, there's a question. Uh, 
I just want to uh, touch on uh, eucalyptus a bit. I work for eucalyptus. L- and, louder, uh, louder. I can't uh, Sorry. I just want to touch on eucalyptus, what you were talking about before. I work for eucalyptus as uh, their Debian release engineer. Uh, we recently uploaded Eucalyptus to Debian. We just didn't quite make the freeze, uh, so we're trying to work with the release team to, to let us in. Um, and also, I just want to clarify, we're not just open core anymore. We're, we're completely open source. Uh, the, the only two components that are not are uh, pieces of VMware technology that we license, and so we're not allowed you, to release that code. You're talking about Eucalyptus? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so it's not open core anymore? No, it's completely open source. Okay. Um, I think that... Even if Eucalyptus is changing the way to, to release it, I think the arm that has been done like two years ago is already passed, okay? And I think it, you have lost a big univer- opportunity here. Very, very much I'm, so. That, that's why they hired me, actually, because yeah. uh, they received quite a black eye on the community. Uh, we've been working really diligently with... Uh, we've got uh, three Debian guys on our team now. We've got Charles Plessy out in uh, Japan. We've got Rudy Godoy down in uh, Argentina, I believe it is, and Stefan Moeller out of Germany have joined the Package Eucalyptus team. So we're we're trying to correct rectify that uh, situation. So will will uh, Eucalyptus be in Weezy Plus One? Um, uh, definitely Weezy Plus One, and we're still working with the release team to try to get in Weezy, uh, but that's maybe not going to happen. That'd be 50/50, great. Fifty-fifty. Yeah. That'd be really great if we had Eucalyptus, yes. like. Uh, I believe that together with OpenStack and XCP, that's the thing that we oh, really I, I want in, in the end. The more, the merrier. So. Yeah. Is there any other questions? <laughs> I don't think there is any. All right. Uh, if yes, go ahead. So uh, this is all new to me, so that was marvelous, but there were an awful lot of acronyms and diagrams and stuff, uh, and I didn't really understand about half of that. Um, however, it looks really interesting. So if you stick that online, I can read it again and try and work out all right. what's what. So, uh, so for those of us who've never done any of this, it's all quite confusing, but it does look good. No, that was after. Let me find it out. This one, right? All right, so what's your question? My question is just put it online so I can read it again. Sure, sure, it is online. Anyone making presentation? It would be nice to upload your presentation in Pantabaf. Yes, uh, it is there already. I uploaded it. Any other question? Is there any questions on that thing? (laughs) So I know that this thing sounds like, whoa, I won't ever, ever be able to do that. In fact, that's why I spend a lot of time to explain it to you. Uh, because it seems complicated, but it's not that hard, okay? And like, in fact, you can start up all of that in one machine, and it's going to magically work. <laughs> all right. So okay, so thanks thank a you, lot. Thomas. And uh, we'll resume at, at noon with uh, talk by Guido Trotter for advanced networking, uh, which is especially relevant to virtualization. So thank you.